But it's not always been an easy career path. Why am I working for free for so many years kind of documenting women in skateboarding? Surely somebody's gonna be coming to me with like a job for it at some point. And that never did happen. And that has still never happened. Anna Bailey is easily the most Scottish person I've ever met. But on top of that, she's also maybe one of the most enthusiastic and animated people we've had for the entire series. Hannah is a photographer, but also a director. She's a writer. She's a producer, kind of all within the realm of action sports. And for most of her career, she's been focusing on sports that are usually dominated by men. However, she's been trying to make them more accessible and enjoyable for women who don't necessarily want to go do these activities with a bunch of macho dudes. I mean, Hannah's way more fun to go do that stuff with anyways. For this episode, I really think you'll be able to feel her enthusiasm and excitement in everything that we did. Episode 6 of Pack Heavy Chase Light with Hannah Bailey. My name is Hannah Bailey and I am 37 years young and I live here in the Highlands of Scotland in Aviemore with the Cairngorm Mountains on my doorstep and I work as a photographer, as a producer and a journalist within the topic of outdoor sports and action sports for environmental and societal good. So this morning it's a lovely brisk Sunday morning here in the Highlands and we're going to head off for a run around one of my favourite spots, Loch Morley with my dog Una and probably have a little dip in the lock as well. Where does it begin? I don't know if you know if you know anything about Scottish people, but one thing about Scottish people is we love to tell stories. They can go on for days, let alone a wee one. So I'll do my best. You know, I grew up in Edinburgh in the city and I didn't really have an awareness of action sports, snow sports, which have become such a big part of my life now. Everyone's on their track to uni and doing what they need to do within their careers. I really felt a bit lost and I dropped out of university, uh, got kicked out actually, and I really didn't know what to do. And it was through a desperate Google search that I came across this concept of doing seasons and going to the snow, which I hadn't really thought about before. I literally packed a bag and 10 days later, it was in the Alps. And I found everything that I was kind of looking for at that time in my life, which is I think what everyone is looking for at that time in life. That is a bit of purpose, connection to people, connection to community and passion as well. And I found that in snowboarding. I was just so enthusiastic and stoked because I think I came from a place of feeling like there was no expectations on me and what my career was meant to be. The wider work that I've done within what I've learned through the skateboarding scene and, and the kind of mission I was on has, you know, fulfilled me in a career sense. Was that succinct enough? <laughs> Yeah, somebody likes running. <laughs> it's the way she sideways jumps. Like The outdoors defines my life here, but I think it really defines a lot of people's here. A lot of it might be to do with moving for the outdoors and being connected to nature and the sports that you love. And I think that's what I really like about the outdoors because you get really grounded. You're tiny, you're kind of insignificant, and that's what's so significant about it. Oh, I love it. When you come out here and you just have the best of it all of the landscapes of Scotland, the loch, the hills, the tree, the tree line. You know, when I was working in the industry early on, I was starting to notice these gaps within the, the lady side of the industry and the scene and the way it was exposed or maybe not exposed. And it's really when I switched across to working in the skateboard scene when I was working for DC Shoes, I found that there was a real lack of awareness and championing and capturing and showcasing what women in skate look like. And I just thought this is like a really inspiring scene. It has a lot of potential, not just inspiring for myself, but I felt like it was really inspiring visually for society and to challenge the media with these images of women in skate um, and that sent me off down a path that I guess I'm still on today in a sense that I work within this field of following stories and creating content around lesser seen people in action sports and the outdoors in order to break down those barriers and invite more people in. 
Like everything I do falls under a mission and it falls under a, a message. Everything that I'm pushed to work in or passionate about falls under this very general message of action sports for environmental societal good. And I think then I work in a topic. If it's not within that area, I won't, I probably won't do it. I wouldn't do it. I work on an array of different things all at once, all the time. I've always got so many different things going on and I think I'm fueled to work in that way because in the niche area of particularly trying to encourage more women into the space originally with my work. So I had to take upon myself lots of different roles and that's why I ended up being a photographer, a producer, a journalist in that space because they all went in hand, hand in hand. I, I was thinking this other day, is like, could, could I be a bit quieter? Could I take things a bit, a bit calmer? And I was talking to my partner Rupert about it and he was like, you're kidding, it's just the way you are. And... Um, there's an enthusiasm for life, for adventure, that is so infectious. People really feel engaged and she's able to get people to do things that I could never be able to do. Um, and I think that's why she's so good at all of the photography and storytelling that she does, is that it comes from a really authentic place and that she's really driven by this um, need or energy to lift other people up. I think it is partly my, my personality. And I think that also comes down to a creative need as well. But it's what I'm used to working in this industry. I'm a very opportunistic photographer. And I think within my action sports and the outdoors and, and you know, made the relationships there with, with the athletes or the participators. Um, and aside from that, I just think if you look within the fields of the outdoors and action sport, the sort of personalities that are in there that are not just the professional athletes, but all the way down to the person who's trying this activity for the first time. There's just so many stories there's so many people and there's so much passion there and it's really endless, endless diverse stories of people in the outdoors. And I really think I'm only tickling the surface right now, so. Hannah brings a special spark of life and a really great perspective to anything that she does. She's like my sounding board and my opposite perspective, if you like. We work well together because we have such different views of the world and I feel like together we can capture a lot more than if we're working apart. Um, and generally, she's like a, a lightning rod for bringing people together, inviting people in. And she's also my partner in the Wandering Workshops Community Interest Company project that we run together. Yeah, I was thinking a lot recently about, you know, I'm at the moment being pregnant and you're changing a lot. But I think what I found really fascinating about the experience is the change in my perspective around little things and, and activities and passions and from the change in how I feel about my body changing, for example, you know. And at the same time, if I think about something like snowboarding, for example, and doing activities that I love, like even running, I've been keeping these activities up because I felt good and able to. And I think with snowboarding, it's been a really fascinating journey because I've been taking it really slow and safely. And it's really helped me actually to reconnect with the simple art of just enjoying a turn and enjoying a carve. And I almost feel like I've interestingly progressed my snowboarding in, in this time. Yeah, that way of slowing down and just appreciating things because I think life just moves so quickly and actually pregnancy is quite a slow process. You know, so many months, it, it's a whole year of transformation. It's got such a complex thing that's going on with you. But if you think about like what your body's having to do, and, but it's just doing it. So it has that simplicity in it. It has that, you just trust your body and it, it's happening and, you know, it's growing this baby. And yeah, the simplicity of it is really, is really enjoyable. And I think that's what I really like about all of these, these activities as well. So even with snowboarding, I think in the past there'd been, it could be so complex for people and it is, it has got its complexities. But even with splitboarding, with the staff of splitboarding, all the gear you need, all the staff that you have to get up the hill, 
When you strip back on all that, I just love the simplicity of it. The simple act of walking uphill, going slow, connecting to it. It's just you and your board and the mountain and your friends. And I think that's just so beautiful. And that's what I love about it. It's very fulfilling for my life. The color is kind of faded on it. It reminds me of the color that we saw in Morlick earlier this morning, you know, like looking across at the trees. But sometimes I like to take things like this with me just because there's something about the shape and the color and the bit of inspiration. Take it up the hill with me. Because that can act as a little brush as well, brush off the snow on your binding. <laughs> That's really insane. I've never seen it like this, actually. But this is the thing with Scotland, like, as I keep saying, it just, the weather changes so quickly. And it's, but I think that's kind of what makes Scottish people really resilient. And they're always ready for things. They're always ready for the good, the bad. You know, whether in skateboarding or snowboarding or outdoors and action sports, is that they're like quite a resilient bunch. You know, the skaters I met in Afghanistan to the snowboarders in Scotland, there's that resilience, which I think is what's so inspiring about humans and something that I'm trying to learn to be more. Oh. I think risk is almost like, it's doing something different and doing something original. And it sounds a very negative word. There's a lot of negative connotations associated with it. Or people might say to me that the, with my path and my career that there's been this element, is there been this element of risk? And I've never felt like it was risky, everything I did, but looking back on leaving the normal path of what everyone else I knew in Edinburgh was doing and deciding just to go out there and see the world. and But I think that risk comes from the unknown. And I quite like the unknown. And I like the not having those expectations and just enjoying the, the journey. Nice, if I can find my keys. I didn't have time to put my full effort and sort of focus on goat crawls. And one day I was just like, this needs to be my entire focus. This is what's like making me happy. I so that was like a big reason as to why I quit my job. It was like that gut feeling that I'm meant to be doing something, but it's just a little bit scary. Yeah.